Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to part number two of the Skymaster F-14 wing assembly. So we have the rest of the wings to finish, so stay tuned and we will get back to finishing up these wings. All right, so in part number one, we got the spoilers and the slats finished on the one wing. The other wing, which is behind me, uh, we got the slats finished. So we got quite a bit of work left to do. Uh, Artemis is gonna help us this time instead of Nez. And uh, <laughs> without further ado, let's get into this. All right, so I was gonna finish both of these wings together, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap up the left wing, get it all completed, and then what I'm gonna do is finish up the right wing, uh, just because I'm on, on a bit of a roll today with this wing. So next thing we have to do is work on getting the flap servo and the flap mechanism all set up. All right guys, so let's talk about the flaps on the Skymaster and uh, let's just chat about manuals first. So keep in mind that, uh, that I don't get anything from Skymaster as of today. Um, they don't do anything for me. They don't, I, I don't get treated special by them. Uh, even though I put all this work in for them. One of the reasons I love putting these videos together is generally the manufacturers probably have a plan or a solution or a system. Uh, but when you're dealing with an overseas company like Skymaster, they probably struggle with conveying what the final outcome should be. So one of the reasons I love taking on a project like this is tackling new things that create a good challenge. So let's take a look at something that I figured out here with the flap system. Okay, so let's talk about how this flap system works. So basically what happens is you put this bent rod in the flaps, insert the flap, you put your pins through the base or the root and also the tip that holds the flap in place. And then this piece here goes onto the shaft and your servo turns that shaft, which in turn, so when that shaft turns like this, there's a pocket that it sits in in the flap and that turns the flap. So that's gonna be our max movement or max bend on the flap is predetermined by this bend right here. So that's fine and dandy. I put this all together. And the reason I'm explaining this in so much detail is I've seen guys put external linkages on when maybe you don't need to. And that's why I'm dissecting this puzzle because I wanna figure out if we need to go external or not. So you do have a fair bit of play here with this shaft. Okay, so there's a pocket or a, a receiver uh, tube that sits, that this shaft sits in, okay? And when it's set up on our servo, we're gonna have it bolted to the servo arm like this. So really, we don't actually have any space here for that shaft to stick in any further. Okay, so you pretty much have to run it flush like that. But regardless, that tube that this sits in, you've got some play in and out with that tube. So in just messing around with this, what I have done is now I've taken that shaft, pulled it all the way into the wing as much as possible. And if we're at neutral here, you can see there's a fair bit of play, not tons, but enough to be concerned with. Okay, so let's, We'll, we'll take this and we'll pretend we're the servo. Okay, now we've angled this. We haven't received our full angle because that shaft is pulled all the way in. And we're pretty good there. There's not really any play. Okay, but let's take that shaft and push it all the way towards the surface. 
okay, as much as possible. Now we get more travel. So now that arm is maxing itself out. Still no play at full flaps. But if we go to zero, and trying to hold this steady is a bit of a challenge. And if we go to zero, there is zero play now with that shaft pushed all the way towards the flap. So if you're building one of these planes or you've set this up with an external linkage, you may have been able to get this working without that. So uh, with that shaft pushed all the way in, it's a nice tight setup here. There's just maybe a, you know, like a millimeter or two uh, of play that, uh, that the surface has, which is totally acceptable. Now, when I first put this together and hadn't figured this out, what I was gonna do is possibly make this shaft bigger, like putting a, a coil of some sort over top or, a, or another shaft over top that's really thin to take up that space, putting paint inside the receiver point where the shaft goes in to take up just that little bit of space that's causing the play, but I don't think we're gonna need to do that. So uh, not 100% sure at this point, but I think that's a great solution. Uh, not saying it's gonna work on everyone, but just keep that in mind when you're dealing with stuff like this. So next thing to do is to figure out how our servo sits in here, how it lines up with the servo horn and all that type of stuff. So, all right, so what I've done is I found a servo horn that mates up to the aluminum one perfectly. So the flap has been taped to its center point there. So we know that this metal horn is sitting at the flap off setting. The radio is currently on the flap off setting and the servo is sitting nice and level against the, the wood piece there. So everything's basically set up perfectly. This is, uh, it's pretty awesome how, how well this uh, is set up. So, so what's gonna keep this shaft inserted into the flap is the position of the servo. Obviously we've got lots of adjustment in our servo, but we're going to have that servo holding that shaft into the right spot, which is gonna work perfectly. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fasten the servo horn onto the servo then we're gonna fasten the metal horn or the aluminum horn onto the servo arm. And that will be our next first step or next step. All right guys, so we've got this first flap servo uh, all set up and uh, it was actually pretty simple to, uh, to get set up. And I just wanna show you here uh, the amount of play. There's like almost zero play in there. And let's see how this works. So I haven't done any adjustments to this yet at all. Rock solid on the first flap setting. So we've got a, one of our servo lines in the way here. I'll just move that out of the way. Okay. So that's mid flaps, takeoff flaps, and here's full flaps. Awesome. Yeah, rock solid. That is really nice. So really nice setup. I actually, uh, I give kudos to Skymaster. That's a really slick way of doing those flaps. Really slick. So definitely good. I love that. I think it, uh, I think it works out awesome. So I'll just give you a close up here of the, uh, the system working. So the servo hasn't been mounted, nothing's been Loctited yet, but uh, there we go. We may have to turn down that max travel on the, uh, the radio just a little bit. We can play with that, but pretty slick. Okay, so pretty slick setup here. All we have to do to get the servo out is undo our set screw and the servo just pops right off like that. Uh, really slick. So uh, pretty cool setup, definitely impressed with that. I think that's a great, uh, great way to, uh, to do that, uh, 
that set up. So. so next thing to do here is we've got to figure out where we're going to route these wires as kind of a, uh, a first step because they're the wire path in this plane is pretty tricky. You don't want to go behind this section here. You kind of have to snake your way through. So we just got to make sure that these servo lines are uh, tucked down nicely and they're not going to interfere with anything. Fortunately, we've got these big openings to deal with uh, any of that stuff, so not a problem. So then what we do with uh, this servo is all we're gonna do is take our L brackets and we're just running them the opposite way down to the wood surface that's in there. And we'll just screw those down and uh, nice and simple servo mounting. Okay, so getting this flap set up here, basically what I do is I was holding the shaft all the way out away from the flap surface pushed the servo and the, uh, the metal or aluminum piece here on all the way. So right now that shaft is bottomed out on the servo arm. Now what we're gonna do is put a adequate amount of Loctite in the hole, tighten that set screw up, and then we'll slide this forward uh, until it's basically almost contacting the, uh, the receiver shaft in there and that will be good to go. And then we'll screw the servo down. All right, guys, when you have a scenario like this where you do not or are not restricted by spacing, what I like to use is the RTL fasteners servo screws, which are those guys right there. So on a scenario like this, where you've got to screw the servo down and you're limited by space because the cover plate has to go on, you pretty much have to use the SkyMaster ones. But uh, I already put one of those SkyMaster ones in here and I find when you're going into thicker, higher quality ply, uh, there's a bit of resistance and those heads just snap off easy. So I did have to pull that screw out and I thought, wait a second, great time for a tip time. And this tip time, of course, is brought to you by Trusty Bent Screwdriver. And uh, one other thing with tip time, guys, is if you go to rtlfasteners.com, okay, we've got a discount code. You can get 30% off your order of $25 or more by using the discount code JV30. And uh, they've got amazing kits that are already pre-put together. I've got a bunch of them over there. Here's my 256 440 kit there. Got all the hardware you need, metric, imperial, it's awesome. So again, use the discount code JV30 to get 30% off your order. All right, so with the functions of the one wing complete now, what we need to do is we need to get the wiring sorted out. So we've got four wires here that need to be extended to go over top of the swing wing area. And uh, so we'll need to extend this one servo wire as well. And these four wires are gonna come to a 12 pin ash lock connector. And then we've got our light wires, which are right here. Ooh, and my tape's coming off. Uh, and those I'm gonna solder some wires on to, uh, to extend. So I gotta be very careful not to lose those in the wing because there's not much extra. So that's uh, the next thing I'm gonna focus on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend these wires first and uh, then I'm gonna put this section or this wing on the fuselage and we'll see where we need to, uh, to cut these wires to. And basically this is where I want my end of my connector to be. So I've marked it with Sharpie there. And then all I do now is, is go through and, and essentially just cut all the wires, strip all the wires, put the connectors on and put my ash lock connector on. So this amount of distance here is nice because it sits right over top of the swing wing, uh, plugs in nicely to our other side of the connector that we're gonna have in the fuselage and uh, pretty slick setup. So, and of course it's nice and protected. So uh, there's gonna be nothing that's gonna uh, damage the wire with the snakeskin on there. Now this is, a, this is only a small section of snakeskin. It just comes into the wing about here, but uh, perfect. All right, so here's our connector layout that we're going to use on the wing. So we're gonna use all ash lock connectors so they all lock together. We're gonna to have the 12 
way connector for all of the surfaces. So all four servos are gonna be on this connector here and the light connector, which only really uses two pins is gonna be on one of the three way or three pin ash lock connectors. So that's what we're gonna use. Like always, we're gonna use the ones with the pins on the wing side so we can plug the servos into the receiver and be able to operate the wing without it connected to the aircraft. So I'm gonna get this laid out and we'll get these installed. Now the, the layout on the wing or the connectors really doesn't matter, but you do wanna keep the standard servo layout, whether it's one way or the other, it doesn't really matter, but uh, you do wanna keep uh, white, red, blue, or uh, signal uh, positive, negative, like you, you wanna keep that layout so when you plug a servo connector in there, it, it works, right? So, but uh, I'm gonna get these installed on the wing. All right, we are all hooked up and all connected with the wing lead. So that worked out good, exactly what I'm looking for. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna get this installed on the aircraft and we will plan out where the female or the other side is gonna go and uh, have a nice plan for that. All right, so this is how we're gonna set this wing plug-in up. So we've got the plug-in coming from the wing and what I did was install one of these plastic clips right there, put some shoe goop around it. It's got the double-sided tape on it. So basically the lead from the fuselage is gonna come and sit right in this area. And then we can plug our wing in, which is gonna sit right there. And everything's gonna be nice and hidden underneath the cover. So that's gonna work out great. Of course, we're protected with our, uh, our wire sheeting right there, but it uh, works out good. So uh, lets the wing completely go through its mobility that it needs and that will work out perfect. So this wing is done. Now we need to finish the other wing, which uh, I won't show you guys any of the steps because we're doing exactly what we did on this one. All right, so I have cut our eight wires uh, for the receiving side of the wing connector. So this is the other side of the wing connector. We've got eight wires because we have two wings and I think those are about uh, three to four feet long. And those ones are based on coming across and then forward to about this far in the fuselage. So that's why I have done them the length I have. So I'm going to create those two connectors, the, the female connectors, and uh, that's a lot of wiring to do, but uh, it's a nice big step to get completed. All right, and that's what our finished receiving harness looks like. So we've got all of our wires installed and our wiring is done. Now what I do as I go through this is I mark the, the wing side, then I mark the receiving side. Now this can come off, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be permanent. This is just for my own, um, own setup. And uh, we've got slats outer, spoiler, flap, slats inner. And then as I wire these things up, I just take a bit of masking tape here and basically write down what wire does what. Now these will get cut off once we're in the front part of the fuselage. So these are probably a foot too long ish but uh, now we've got all of our wires labeled and in this case I could label these with just the output or sorry the input number for the uh, the central box 400 but uh, just out of habit I like to uh, write down what the surface actually does. Now next thing we're going to do is we're going to install a piece of snake skin over top of this section right here just so as it's moving through the swing wing and all that kind of stuff, it uh, is protected and it's also less likely to hang up on stuff and uh, interfere if we've got all these wires bundled together rather than floating individually. So I've cut my piece of snake skin and I've treated the ends here or burnt the ends with a lighter. Treated sounds so much more professional, but uh, we're just gonna stuff these things through. Uh, also a great time in the video to thank each and every one of you guys that have donated towards the shop build fund. Uh, thank you so much for those donations. 
absolutely awesome. Uh, very, very appreciated. And uh, exciting news, uh, what day is today? Today is Thursday, this video comes out tomorrow. And uh, I just did a live on Wednesday night. Uh, it was kind of a random live, uh, live stream through YouTube and we opened up the MIG cockpit. But uh, we are moving into the shop on Saturday. So if you're watching this video on Friday, when it came out uh, tomorrow, we are moving into the, uh, into the shop. So thank you guys for those donations. Uh, it is very appreciated, whether they're big or small, every little bit is extremely helpful. So, so that's how I pull the snakeskin through. Just push it all the way towards the end. Like that. There we go. And I'll show you a little trick here. I know some guys use uh, heat shrink tubing. I don't like that because it's not a, not a, you know, super strong seal. So I use zip ties. That's what I call them. Tie wraps, I think some people call them, but uh, I'll show you what I do. All right, so we just take our zip tie, get it around there. Now what I do when I do these zip ties up is all the wires are getting pulled towards the middle. So I'll take these two outer wires, just give them a little bit of a pull. So it's got a bit of a relief to it. And then we just do one of those. Doesn't need to be crazy tight, just nice and snug. And you can take some side cutters and go like that. And then once this end's done, we take the snake skin, pull it to stretch everything out. And now we'll put it around the other side. Give it one notch of a pull with the side cutters. Ooh. And there we go. There's a the finished wiring harness. So this is ready to get installed in the fuselage and have the wing plug into it. All right, and there we are with everything installed. Now, we've got a couple options here for this, uh, this receiving wire. I think initially what I'm gonna do is leave it loose like this. It doesn't need a ton of play. Basically, as this wing swings out, um, this, I guess, shortens a little bit is the best way to explain it. Sorry, as the wing swings in, this shortens a little bit, like this way, as the wing swings out like this, we're gonna have a bit of an extension here as well too. I'll show you guys here as we go through this. So you can see what happens there with the wire. We'll just go all the way out on the wing. There we go. So that's all the way out. So we want a little bit of movement here and uh, I think that is, uh, is gonna work out good. So we'll leave that excess kind of looped in this area. So the wire does need to be movable and this is why I, one of the really important reasons why I covered this with, uh, with the snakeskin material because you're, you know, you're constantly rubbing against this the swing wing mechanism so uh, really good to keep this protected and uh, but I think that's going to work out awesome so anyways that's the uh, the wire harness so that worked out great and uh, excited this wing is uh, is good to go All right guys, and there is an overall shot of what we got. So wing episode part number two is complete. All right guys, and that is everything for the second wing episode. Man, that's a cool shot of that plane, hey? All right, well, next F-14 video will be coming at you from the new shop. So that's gonna be an exciting time. Thank you so much for watching the F-14 videos. This is, a, uh, is an absolutely gorgeous aircraft. 
really looking forward to uh, to bolting the nose on this thing. So uh, next video, we are gonna be working on basically the wiring, getting it running forward. And uh, we're probably gonna hook the lights up or the light controllers, we'll get those installed. And then we will have uh, the, all the lights from the rear section plugged into the light controller. Uh, we can't do the front ones yet. So that's going to be the next video is, uh, is going to start off with wiring and uh, we're going to be very close to being ready to bolt this nose on, which brings us very close to uh, not completion, but getting closer to completion. So uh, really exciting steps on this aircraft. So that's everything for the video guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give the video one of these, give it a thumbs up, uh, hit that uh, subscribe button. If you're watching this video and you haven't subscribed, where you been? And uh, next time we see you, we'll be in the new dig. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.